Goedemorgen mensen. Oké, okay. sorry, ik heb niet getting to de video's as often as I should be. De website been keeping me quite busy. Ja, uh, yeah, let's have a look at what's going on over here. So as you can tell, not looking too terrible. You can see I've cut the, the collar around the edge. Uh, and I've been taking this quite short lately. Uh, not in the last week because I had, oh, there's a poop. I had a bit of a, a caterpillar issue. Um, and I haven't cut this out to make a green. I know a lot of guys have assumed that that's what I was doing. Keep uh, up to date with what I'm doing on Instagram. It's much easier to get things out there when I do little chops and changes. But you can tell behind me, I've just let everything grow boss. Uh, and it's because I don't want to mow so much lawn so often. Uh, so I've cut this little fake green section out. Firstly, to have a look, because I might actually want to put one in here. Um, and secondly, just because if I can control this area, I can get a neater looking lawn doing less mowing, less cleanup, less, 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 less of everything. And then the main lawn, you know, the rest of it, let's call it the rough, uh, that I'll only do maybe once a week. And then this little area I'm cutting about every second day. But, you know, today is Saturday, Monday. I just, I thought that I might have some cricket issue because I heard the crickets the night before. Came outside, did a little soap test. Turns out it wasn't crickets. There are one or two crickets in the area, but I think they're in flower beds. And uh, they're not mole crickets at least. And I had a sea of caterpillars everywhere on this lawn on Monday. And it was looking horrendous. And I don't think that I took, I definitely didn't take any video. Um, yeah, I didn't film anything regarding it. But I think I might have taken one or two pictures. I'll put them in if I, if I did. But um, otherwise, yeah, I, <laughs> they chowed this grass in about two days. So I just grabbed what I had in the, in the shed. And that was, I think it was Effecto's plant protector. And that's meant for mole crickets. But I chucked it down anyway. And it clopped those cat caterpillars. Like the next day when I did soap test, there was nothing. There were, there were none alive. And I've been monitoring it. So from Monday night is when I put the stuff down. Tuesday, Wednesday, I already started noticing the grass going green again. Yesterday morning I mowed again, and um, yeah, let's have a look at it. So you can tell, it's actually coming back pretty good. This looked like a woody stalk fest. Everything was just, I mean, you were looking at ground. And granted, I did, <coughs> excuse me, I did sculpt the lawn down to about six mils with the last, and this is with the rotary. The thing that's keeping me going with the rotary is that I'm rolling the lawn or this little patch uh, semi-regularly. I couldn't do it obviously with all the rain. I wanted to do it a lot more by now. Um, and it's to get all these contours out and what have you before I start leveling. Because if you level and there's big contours, you're gonna have tons and tons and tons of sand to get this right. It's just, it's too much money. So rolling it, a bit of labor, saves you a lot of money. Now, what you'll notice is that the grass that's here is quite fine. And that's because it's now, I would say, a 60-40 Bermuda Kikuyu ratio at this point in time, the 40 being the Kikuyu. And I'm going to throw it in there. Um, you can tell the yellow here. I know you Kikuyu guys are starting to hate me, um, but the caterpillars were all on the Kikuyu. They weren't on the Bermuda. I think if I left them, they probably would have child the Bermuda as well. But they went to the Kikuyu first, probably because it's a more lush, fat leaf, you know, it's something better to chew on. Um, but yeah, that's an interesting point. And also, don't get it wrong, I know I tease the Kikuyu guys a lot about their uh, good grass but crap lawn. And uh, it's not because I don't like Kikuyu, I like Kikuyu. I've got it out of my front yard, it's marvelous. It grows back easy, all the rest of it. But when I want to try and create that short lawn, why do I want to put down a plant growth regulator just to. No, you know what I mean? It's, it's, there's, it's too much. So, yeah, those are just my initial thoughts on the whole thing. But this, this way is keeping it under control. So, what am I going to do? You can tell from this angle how much of that. I mean, there's grass growing there now. If you take the close ups, then you'll be able to see what's what. But I'll do that maybe just now. But, and you can see still this yellow discoloration. That's all the kakuyu. And I've managed to. Uh, I've managed to get rid of the. Pretty much all of the crabgrass that was in here. So, definitely manually remove crabgrass. It's a horrible job. Uh, and we don't really have the stuff to. We don't have the herbicides to do it properly in South Africa um, and save the grass. You're going to kill your grass if you try and kill crab grass here. So, what are we going to do to get this back into shape? Well, firstly, we're going to pick up a dog turd. 
And then we've got to put down some fertilizer. And I think I have the right stuff. Let's bring that out. Okay. So this is the Bermuda. Uh, this isn't one of the better sections. It's like the, kind of the norm. Obviously not where it's being charred. Where it's being charred is just these little fine tips coming out up and out of the um, the, the groggy stuff underneath. Um, but yeah, it's a really dense mat. I think we're sitting at, now it's about, oh, after this day or so's growth, it's about 12 mil, I'm guessing. It was about 8 mil after I finished trimming it. Um, and that's with the rotary, by the way. And you could tell the cut. And this is an unsharpened rotary, uh, but it's my unsharpened rotary, so I don't know what that grades as. It's other people's unsharpened rotaries. You can tell there's a bit of thatch in between everything, but that's because they were just a gazillion insects doing their thing as well. The cuts are pretty clean. So good for that. Anyway, let's have a look at what I'm going to put down. So the first thing is one of my new goodies. This is Rolls Agri Rescue and it is pelletized chicken manure. And the good thing, if I can get it in the light, about this stuff is that every organic pelletized type fertilizer that I've managed to get my hands on, this stuff is much more potent as far as NPK values go. And so because of that, I'm getting a, a, let's say still, actually quite a light, gentle recovery of the, of the plant. But I'm getting a little bit of soil conditioning down. So I'm going to put this down probably later this afternoon because the dogs will chow this. So when they're going to be inside the house chilling out with us, I'm going to have thrown this stuff out, give it a wet. And in two or three days, when it's kind of broken down and gotten into the ground, I'm going to put down the following. And that is also Rolf's Agri, sorry, really poor camera positions here. It's my Vuma, and this is a starter fertilizer, so it's a 212, but it's a pretty potent 212. Uh, and what this is going to allow is a real kick in the backside, but it's going to give us the phosphorus levels that we want. It's going to pull it up quite quickly. Uh, and it has everything else that you would need, baseline as well, iron and all the other macros. So you've got a good content of macros, it's no longer just a little lightweight uh, liquid fertilizer this is a real kick in the backside um, but it doesn't have humates and that kind of thing in it as well so it's it's just fertilizer and then i help it out with a little bit of that or a cult product or uh, you know that kind of thing as well just something organic just to help the soil as well but as far as plant feeding goes that's it so the the rescue chicken manure that is going to help sort of uh, egg that process on of starting growth and then as I see that it started to grow, remember you never fertilize heavily, especially not with nitrogen, when the plant is already quite damaged uh, because you're going to induce a disease. The, you know, it's easy for disease to happen to get in there and mess up your plant. So wait for it to kind of recover, start to heal. When you see that it's, it's actually growing positively and over the majority of the space, or let's say the whole area if you can see that, then you clap it with a hard tack fertilizer. So anyway, I'm not going to film all of the putting down of the stuff because I don't have enough time for that. Um, I'm going to cut the video off here, get the chicken poopy down, uh, and then we'll maybe check in again tomorrow after I've watered all of that in. Right, and one more thing while I'm busy packing this up is you must remember that when you've got these gaps in your lawn like this, uh, it's a big, big, big helping hand to weeds. So do not treat for the weeds now. So in my case, I've already had chemicals down to try and control pests. Don't, never mix chemicals, <laughs> firstly. If you're not qualified to do it, don't do it. Uh, secondly, the chemical's already down there, so the grass is damaged from that, plus the actual pest damage as well. We're gonna first let it recover, we're gonna get everything going, and then after a couple of weeks, so you gotta just let the weeds grow, we'll pull them out manually, then we'll treat again for weeds again. Uh, I see now, I've managed to get my oxalis under control, but now I've got khaki burr, uh, where it actually was, it hasn't been carted anywhere else, but the khaki burrs started to come back up again one or two, so that needs to be systemic to get rid of it. And obviously pulling that out in this particular area was, maybe it's deep enough that it's just holding on. Okie dokie, next morning, let's see what we've got going on. Yeah, the sun's a bit glary on the camera from this side, but there's a definite greening up. A little bit of growth, um, that middle part there is still slightly yellowish. This is almost filled in completely, you can obviously still, still see the little pellet all over the place. But after it's been damp like this for a whole night, the next time you water it or it has any 
action on the grass that breaks down quite quickly after this it's just that first bit of breakdown so there we still got a little bit of the skulk coming through or where it was eaten i'm not really sure anymore uh, that yellow spot there is where i definitely saw quite a lot of the caterpillar concentration yeah so the little soft start that i was mentioning earlier on does appear to have worked quite nicely we've got a pretty dense cover going on uh, it's still showing me i mean it's a guesstimate me saying 60 40 but i definitely see more bermuda now than i do of kukuyu or at the very least i don't see um, areas of kukuyu anymore what i see are areas of bermuda and then you get these um, you can tell very easily where the kukuyu is because it's almost like a tuft that starts to happen so let me give you an example here i'm trying to try and see if the camera can pick it up but you've obviously got the the pellet now which is a bit of a distraction but like this kind of green there and there this is all bermuda and then you've got that which is kukuyu kukuyu so there's still a pretty good root system or rhizome structure combination under there that's still doing its thing it's just pushing back up through so to get rid of that will be very very difficult but as long as it's becoming less over time i think that serves my purpose for the point of the whole experiment is just to see what grass is actually stronger and um, well they're both too strong against one another if you keep it short then the uh, Bermuda takes it if you let it get a bit of growth the Kukuyu takes it um, so far the statistics say that you should have better strength or let's say better structure out of the Kukuyu I can't seem to tell any difference on that um, unless the Bermuda is very very short if it's not healthy it crumbles and breaks up much faster than an unhealthy Kukuyu the Kukuyu has got the ability that if it's just a little bit longer it can grow better uh, and it can be a lot stronger so it has the potential to take over and I think if you left them out in nature what will probably happen is the Kukuyu will grow higher and make more of a bush looking structure but the Bermuda will it will always be under there and wherever it catches a bit of light it will try and make a bit of sideways growth it will always aim to grow sideways first from what i've seen versus kukuyu which has that little upward start and then it does start to run but if it's affected by anything else it just keeps growing upwards and making bushes so just to clarify that doesn't mean that i think kukuyu is a better lawn just a better grass i want to tell you that i think bermuda is a better lawn because i like the way it looks more than kukuyu but there's too many there's too many pros and cons so i think that my conclusion to the whole lot is if you want a, a good sub 20 millimeter let's say a regularly untreated grass so no pgr and all the rest of it sub 20 mils goes to bermuda 20 to 30 mils goes to kukuyu i think that's how i can dumb it down so this is it from the other side yeah we'll have a dense mat in the next couple of days so all right, the soft start has been initiated. In a couple of days, <coughs> excuse me, in a couple of days, I'll decide whether or not I'm gonna put down any hard tack. Uh, this is already doing better than what I thought it was gonna do for one night. So I'll can the video at this. In a couple of days, we'll do another video recapping on everything here and then possibly putting down a more potent fertilizer. So thanks for watching, like and subscribe. We'll check in the next one. Cheers.